Welcome to another episode of Back and Forth Becker and Or. We're going to have a lot of fun, lots of topics. You can see them all at the bottom, including the lead off topic. Will high interest rates crash the stock market? We're going to go through some data, answer that question. You want to stick around. Yes, a lot of interesting topics we have to run through today, so I will not keep us too long in regards to getting to those important messages that we have to get out to you. But if you want to find more of our back and forth or more by Financial 15s, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you can, it's always worthwhile. Lots of videos to take a look at. Also, visit our website at BeckerOr.com or like us on Facebook. You can find all this great content there, and we're more than happy to give you more going forward. But to start with today, as Clint mentioned, we want to know, What's going on with interest rates as they rise? Is the stock market going to crash? What are the problems we got to look for, Clint? Yeah, and that's a, that's a key question. We're in the mix of a drawdown now, rates are certainly part of that story. But if you look at some of the data, I'll pull this up here, and you have to give full credit uh, to Ryan Dietrich, LPL Research. He's the one that clarified the data. But he looked at periods in the U.S. where the 10-year yield moved by more than 1%, 100 basis points. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right, when that happens, when those rates go up, what happened to the stock market? And you can see there, Kevin, the far yeah. right column, the S&P 500, there's a lot of green. 80% <laughs> of the time, markets were actually higher during that rising rate period. So there were a couple of red, but the bulk of the time it was green. The average gain was 17.3%. So the, the story that rates are going to crash the market, historical data doesn't really line up with that. No. And again, I mean, I, I would assume that, I mean, if we take a look at it in sort of a perspective is if we're starting to see rates rise, it's because we're having what's been known as a very good economy going forward, usually before that time frame ever came. Things have gotten on track. And the reason we're trying to raise interest rates is we're slowing the economy down a bit because it's going to get ahead of itself. In those years that you showed up before, it looks like the oil crisis in the 70s, uh, the, the massive 20% interest rates in the 80s and then into the early 90s, we are starting to see some stuff, a very small percentage there. But yeah, it seems that most of this stuff has come after we've seen a really good run in the market. And again, it's not going to stop it immediately tomorrow, but you're right. From the looks of things, higher rates shouldn't be really scaring us that much. Not, I mean, you'd have to have some sort of massive <clears throat> rate increase, I think, to have any sort of scenario going forward. But you're right. I think this is something that shouldn't scare people as much as they, as maybe the, uh, the pundits in the media suggest it might. <laughs> You need a story for a headline, right? And, and yes, we know negative yes. stories grab attention. You can't say like <laughs> moderate rates tend to be decent for the market. No. That's not a good headline. But uh, the right. extreme is where you get the issues, right? If rates really jump, well, that could be a problem. But if you get moderate yeah. increases, it tends to be uh, actually positive for the markets. But uh, exactly. how do people bet on that, Kevin? we got to move topics here. We're talking about yes. another topic in uh, lots of sports betting, but yep. economic events like this. You're talking about inflation, talking about interest rates. How do you, you position your portfolio? How do you benefit from that? Well, we now have an answer, don't we? Yes. I mean, Kelsey, I, I can't believe this. <laughs> As I say, I will go and I'll play sports select and I'll do all the other ones. Vegas is my favorite place for the sports betting scenario. I can parlay. I can do everything I want. But now you have shown me the light. You've told me that I can now bet on anything that is out there in the world almost. And again, I mean, as we see right here, you've got a whole bunch of different topics to deal with. Uh, Jerome Powell, you're dealing with COVID cases. How does this work, Clint? Yeah, this is Calshi.com and they create markets and it's really a binary market. It's a yes or a no. And it's a whole host of different topics. And then there's going to be lines based on how the money comes in, how people bet on it. And you can see it's not just like sports betting. There's pretty much everything here. Uh, the topic right here, will Texas average more than 75,000 new COVID cases per day in February? Well, 97 people, 97 percent are saying no, and you got some pretty good odds <laughs> if you end up being right with a yes on that one. But there's a whole host yep. of topics. So if you're thinking I want to bet on inflation or on interest rates or whatever economic topic of the day, you can see there's lots there. There's lots of lots of options. You have home sales, you have interest rates. When are rates going to go up? You have one here asking about a recession. You click on it. You can even see how the market varied, how it changed over ah. time as the money came yep. in. More odds are going yes, more odds are going no. Um, now, keep in mind, this is this is not investing. This very much is gambling. This is betting. <laughs> That's, I mean, but, you're, you're definitely talking the red and black off of the roulette wheel for sure, no matter how you want to yeah. play it that way. And, and I guess the one thing we do want to caution is investors, do not go on there and find out, should or should I not buy GameStop? Things like that, you just don't want to bet on here and then come to us and say, well, Kelsey said I should do this. That's what the odds are. That's not what this is all about. 
No, definitely not. But simply an interesting concept, right? It just expands yes. it. So if you want to have some fun, say our rate's going to go up next month. Well, sometimes people try to position their stock and you're always doing indirectly, right? You're finding a company yep. two, two or three uh, uh, stories down that might benefit from it. This is direct, right on the decision. Is it going to go up? Or is it going to go down? Are the rates going to move? You can actually find a market on that or on Cal Sheet. And if you want to have some fun, you could do that. So that option is there. I should mention that's all US dollars. And of course, yes. everything's in crypto nowadays. There's a separate site specifically for cryptocurrencies. But uh, we're not going to get into that. We're going to focus on the main one there, the Cal Sheet site. And now moving on, Kevin, Perfect. lots has happened in the last year. Lots of different yes. items, different asset classes have moved up, have moved down. I'm going to pull up a chart here and I want to get your, your opinion on. This is from Ben Carlson. It's a mosaic of the different asset classes and how they've performed over the last 10 years. Now, there's a few things that jump out to me here. What's your major takeaway? Yeah, I mean, if you take a look at it, the majority of these things, they're bouncing all over the place. You see, you know, small caps in the middle, small caps in the bottom, small caps at the top. But the one consistent that I'm seeing out of this is that for the majority of time, commodities are showing as one of the worst performing stocks over a variety of years. And then all of a sudden, it seems they go from the worst to the best. And that's that's one thing that we have to take a look at here. So, I mean, all the time you get, well, should I be buying gold? Should I be getting into oil and gas and things along those lines? Again, is this really something that's going to dictate how we should play? And of course, there is no consistency. But I mean, this is just a short span of time over 10 years. But I mean, as you take a look at it, sort of scenario, four years here and then a big year, four years of down and then a big year. So consistency there. I, I don't know if that's a trend or if there's certain specifics, but what do you see out of the chart? Yeah, I think it speaks to diversification. If you're trying to pick the winning asset class every year, that's going to be tough. You can see how they jump around, right? One of them's at the top next year. It's in the middle and it's the top again and then bottom. There was none that was consistently at the top. It's simply not how it works. So that's the whole area of diversification, specifically on commodities. They tend to run in cycles and you had a cycle there where it was yeah. near the bottom for a number of years. And now you're starting <laughs> to see it move to the top. Is it the start of a new commodity cycle? Maybe we'll have to see, but certainly an interesting side note there from uh, that asset class mosaic from Ben Carlson. And I think yes, we got to exactly. move into the sports yeah, world for you, Kevin, because I know you got uh, lots of exciting sure. games coming on this weekend. What's your take uh, on the NFL and on the upcoming Super Bowl? Well, I've got Super Bowl days coming up in the in the next little while. I got playoffs coming up right now. That's the big thing. We had six wild or yeah, six wild card games last week. You now get two more games this week, and that's a big factor going forward. We're starting to see that the cream of the crop is coming to the top. Again, no big surprises. The only one that's actually basically come through that wasn't a top four team were the 49ers. Everybody else is sort of one as predicted going forward. But it does lead to an interesting scenario, I think. Here we go. There's Tom Brady again. He is in the Bucs. They are still in the playoffs. Is Tom going to win another Super Bowl? Now, not being a big Tom Brady fan, I'm not for this, but what do you think? Is this a possibility? Do we see it actually happening? A record-setting number? You got to give him credit. He's in his 40s. I think he's already up to yep. seven wins, and this would be number eight if he somehow pulls it off. Now, it's a very tough road ahead. They still got a couple of games, and they're going to have to get through the Rams this weekend and then yep. likely face the Packers after that and then into the Super Bowl. I have a feeling the NFL is probably secretly hoping that they get past the Rams and yet end up with a Packers Bucks uh, conference final there. Because they'd love to see oh, Tom yes. Brady and Aaron Rodgers. I think that would be a you know a highlight reel for them. They'd love to see that matchup right before the Super well, Bowl. Well, specifically in the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. But I got an interesting <laughs> stat that maybe you should take a look at. It has been said that if you won the Super Bowl in the previous year and you had to play a wild card game the year after, 10 times this has happened, not a single team that won the Super Bowl the year before has made it to through the divisional final. So if I'm playing the odds on that, zero for 10, theoretically, Brady will be eliminated either this weekend or next weekend, and he won't make it to the Super Bowl final. I'm hoping for that, not being a big Tom Brady fan, and I do like Rodgers and the way the Packers play, but is that something I should really consider, or is this sort of, yeah, it happened in the past, don't worry about it going forward? I know, zero for 10, that, that's pretty good odds. Like every yeah. single time that has been the case. They win the Super Bowl the following year, they, they get in through a wild card, they've never actually won it after yep. that so 10 times none of them have actually come to fruition hey he's broken the odds before he's got seven rings to prove it again. yeah Maybe he does. The first time it actually <laughs> hasn't come to fruition but we'll see lots yep. of excitement for the weekend i bet you there's probably something on calcium you can bet on that <laughs> yeah we should 
We're going to have to go in and we'll tell you how we do over the weekend. <laughs> there we go. But the question of the week, a uh, question we've gotten many times uh, from clients, certainly given yep. the real estate market interest rates, I'll tee this up for you, Kevin, with rates coming higher, expected to go higher, will those higher rates slow down the housing market? Well, my first guess would be no. And again, even though everybody's always, I'm worried about higher rates, I'm worried I'm going to have to pay more on that mortgage. I, I really got to be concerned. Now, it may stop the, if the phenomenal increase in pricing that we've seen going on, but I don't think it's going to slow the housing market by any stretch because, again, rates are at extreme lows right now. Even if you go 1% higher, most people, I think, can still afford that in their budget just based on where things are. But there's always that option there. What do you say? Yeah, I'd be in agreement and I'll pull up a bit of data to back that up. This is U.S. data from Ben Carlson at WealthofCommonSense.com. He looked at, in the U.S., they have a 30-year mortgage rate. He looked at periods when that 30-year mortgage rate went up and you can see it there, starting mortgage rate, ending mortgage rate. Wow. And then what happened to housing prices while the rates were rising? You can see in all the instances, housing prices in the U.S. actually increased as rates were going up. Now, we don't know the full context here. Maybe housing prices were just completely shooting through the roof and then they slowed their growth after the rates started to rise. That's certainly a possibility. But the idea that it's just going to completely collapse seems unlikely. And uh, the data in the U.S. can back that up. I think we'd see something similar here in Canada as rates start to rise. Maybe it moderates the housing market, but I can't see it just dropping right off. And I think the last point there I want to mention Housing is a very emotional decision. This is not yes. like you're buying a, a, an investment based solely on the data, right? It's not a rental no. property. This is a place where you're going to live. You're going to raise a family. Like it's, There's a lot of emotion in there. So I don't think it can always fit neatly into a financial category. And that's probably why we're seeing prices continue to rise despite some of these other factors that maybe would slow it down. Yeah, and I think you're right. I mean, even taking a look back at that chart you showed, even in the in the early 80s, which, you know, you're having all time historic rates at 18, almost 19 percent, you still had housing prices increasing. And we are substantially lower than those numbers nowadays. So, again, I believe that, yeah, just based on those things alone, you're right. The emotional attachment to owning property is huge and people will find a way to deal with that one. So I think that's a perfect scenario. And yes, we, we don't guarantee that they won't have a housing downside, but Based on the stats and the data that we've got, that's where we're dealing with it. Again, if you have any questions you want to connect with us on this topic, any other topics we've done, any of the financial 15s, please visit us at chatwithclintonandkevin.com. We are more than happy to answer any of the questions that you have. We are here only to make sure that you get the right answers based on all the knowledge that we've had beforehand or what we can find out. Otherwise, I think that covers a lot of back and forth today. We wish today with the blizzard outside that we were on the palm trees and the sandy beach where we see behind us, but uh, that's not the case. We are here to maintain bringing you information whenever we can. Clint, closing words are yours. What do you have to say? I think you covered it all there. So we'll say everyone stay safe, take care. We'll be back again soon.